I don't think I ever really got started in data journalism one day, but um, I guess um, I saw examples of data journalism and wanted to um, work out how those techniques could help me and other journalists save time or do deeper journalism or cover stories and issues that weren't being covered. Um, and probably around 2005 when I saw Adrian Holovati's work on Chicago crime, um, that was really when I particularly started getting interested and, and looking at just automation, not necessarily spreadsheets, but um, automating things so I didn't have to do them over and over again. The one area where I'm spending a lot of time at the moment is web security, the, the ability for, for journalists to protect their sources, to protect their information. Um, now that might include data security, uh, but it's, it, it, particularly if you're dealing with leaks from people, it's becoming harder and harder to make sure that, that those people aren't identified in some way, so for example by publishing the data or through your communications and I think most journalists, the vast majority of journalists are very very careless and very ignorant of just how public their communications are and obviously we know a lot of now about surveillance uh, and the collection of information about journalists as well as everyone else. So web security I think is, is the number one issue right now um, and that's something I'm very interested in. Um, the other area that, um, that I'm uh, more excited about I guess rather than um, pessimistic is um, the ability to tell stories effectively. So it's one thing to have lots of numbers but the narrative, the telling of the story um, and doing that well I think is the next challenge once you've got the data. I have absolutely no idea what the future of data journalism holds. Um, certainly we can expect more and more data and as a result I guess we could expect more and more data tools and we could expect computers to get more powerful in, in um, doing things with that. Um, beyond that, you know, it's very difficult to tell what might happen in terms of what those tools can do, what um, commercial environment we're going to operate in as journalists. Um, I think there are, there are trends in both directions. Freedom of, of information laws are spreading to more and more countries, but also there's a reaction against them politically. So in some cases um, there's an attempt to narrow the scope of those laws and there's also an attempt to broaden it in other areas. Um, Organisations and governments are becoming better at avoiding being accountable under those acts. Um, there's more hiding, I think, of information. So, um, so legally I think the landscape is going to continue to change both for good and for worse. Um, scraping becomes easier but again I think organisations will get better at making it harder for us to scrape that information um, and I think the, that the connection between data is particularly powerful. I think the ability, you, you see it in a few examples like ProPublica's use of, of a Facebook log, login to tell you stories about how your school performs on a particular story. I think that ability to personalise data could be incredibly powerful in the next 10 or 20 years where by logging in through an account that has information about us we can find out more about how a story or an issue affects us. But that also brings up new challenges for making sure we are connected with the wider social issues and not just people like me. The, the, the first thing I would say to a junior journalist who is interested in data journalism is don't focus on tools. Um, don't look at whether you should learn fusion tables or Excel or focus on stories. Um, what is the story you want to tell? What is the issue you're interested in? What data is available in that area? And what challenges does that data present? So is it a case that you do need to learn spreadsheets in order to work out an average or compare figures and, and um, uh, subtract one figure from another? Um, or is it the case that the data actually is a little bit ugly and is a little bit incomplete and maybe you need to do some cleaning? Or is it the case that the data is very clear 
but you need to visualise it in some way to tell the story. So different stories and different issues will present different problems and the best way to learn data journalism is to be guided by each story. Start with very simple stories that don't present a lot of problems and then get progressively more ambitious as you want to tell bigger and and uh, harder stories and don't feel you have to tell the big story to begin with. Tell a very small part of it first and then tell another small part and then bit by bit you can start to build up the jigsaw of the big picture. Uh, often that's how big stories evolve. They don't come out all in one piece. They come out bit by bit and then something happens, a threshold is passed and we get the big story. <laughs>